So here in California, police in California arrest a white supremacist and he had weapons stored away and he had a racist manifesto. And so let's look at this right here. So I'm looking for crime to go up. And uh, it has went up in a lot of places because of this pandemic. And, you know, believe it or not, although some people feel that it's over, it's not over. And I believe we're going to be dealing with this for quite some time. So, um, like I have told you, that there is a race war going on. You see what's been happening to a lot of the black athletes. And you see what's been happening to some of the people having to do protesting on uh, voter rights. And, you know, you're seeing um, uh, people getting arrested for speaking out on issues that are basically civil issues and they end up getting arrested or they're trying to penalize them. And then we have a lot of groups that are rising up, like the supremacist groups in particular, this one right here, he actually had a manifesto. So this is by Joe Barato. And this is pretty disturbing here. This was on Friday the 16th. A white man in California was arrested last week after being found with an arsenal of weapons and ammo and a manifesto saying he wanted to specifically kill black, Hispanic, and Jewish people. And so this guy is 32 years of age. His name is Wesley Charles Mar Martin or Martinez. Okay. Um, and it says he was arrested on July the 9th after Campbell police officers were notified about a man looking into vehicles and storage, a uh, storage, a uh, storage shed. Okay. So when the responding officers searched Martin, oh, okay, so I believe it's not Martin's, it's Martinez. Uh, his truck, they searched it and they found that there were assault style weapon, weapons, handguns, ammo, ammunition, and an inactive pipe bomb. So he was ready to do a lot of damage, a lot of carnage that he was ready to do towards specific individuals that are innocent. So a statement from Santa Clara County District Attorney's Office revealed authorities also found a journal that was filled with racist and anti-Semitic rhetoric and an alleged detailed plan to go to sporting goods store, dress up as an employee, and tie everybody up. So these are just regular everyday places that people go to and shop, and you're not really thinking anything's going to happen to you. You just you know, maybe you're out with your family or you're by yourself. Maybe you're looking for something and then you're in a store and you don't know that one of these guys are in there. So he was looking to do some damage. So the DA also notes that some of the bullets had messages inscribed on them, such as to a wi widow from the Grim Reaper and a good, a good start is what it had on there. Grim Reaper and a good start. To a widow from the Good Reaper, or the Grim Reaper, and um, a good start. So he had etched, I guess, little messages on the bullets. And so a true white man fashion, in that fashion, police say Martinez was calm and cooperative on the scene and tried to explain why he wasn't in the wrong. And he tried to rationalize everything, insisting that there was no ill intent, Campbell police captain. And so he was very calm, cool, and collected. And so he didn't go without a fight. At, well, he didn't fight. It, you know, with a, he didn't go with a fight. So Ian White told CNN this. And so I wouldn't be surprised if Martinez pointed to a Blue Lives Matter sticker on his truck and was like, hey guys, I'm on your side. So this is the impression that this man gave the, the officer. And so we definitely feel a crisis was averted. And so this is um, what uh, White had said. And so there was a significant threat to the public. And White added the investigators are looking for more motive behind the arsenal and not telling them how 
to do their job, but I think the journal outlining his plan and the violence that he wanted to commit against Blacks, Hispanics, and Jews, people might just be the key to finding the motive, of course. And so Martinez was arraigned on Tuesday and is currently being held on uh, bail for $300,000. So he, he has been charged with possession of assault style right, uh, weapons and multiple silencers as well and um, drugs and the materials to make a pipe bomb he actually had. So he was going to um, probably construct that as well to do some real major damage. So I'm simply glad that this situation didn't end up in a far more tragic manner. White, suprem white supremacists have been labeled the greatest threat to domestic safety by the FBI. And there has been a growing concern that the uh, easing of COVID restrictions will lead to a rise of extremist, viol extremist violence. So I want you guys to pay close attention because I believe that is what is coming. It's already here, actually. So they're, they just caught this one. But I'm sure there are others out there just waiting to finish off what it is that this guy was, was going to do. And so I think people should take notice of this because I don't think people think it's that serious when it's not happening or they don't see anything significantly wrong in the moment. But when we had that issue on January the 6th, there were different people there for different reasons, but I believe some of those people that were there were in groups like this, what we're seeing here. So um, having said that, I'm going to let this video go until the next video, but um, also I want to make mention, I'm going to add this in there, that... Um, there is an issue with police officers as well. Um, so this right here is talking about Atlanta. So this is going to be another article that I'm going to slide in here before I go. So this is, um, I've been seeing this happening a lot where officers have either, they've taken a break or they don't care anymore because of what's been going on. So Atlanta police ditching department and slamming leadership in letters. And so that is another reason why I believe crime is going to also escalate. So this is Barbar Mini Chakrabo Morty. Okay, so this was on the 7th. This is on the 17th right here. This is today, actually. So Atlanta, Lieutenant Mark Cooper spent 26 years as an Atlanta officer. And his goal was to hit the 30-year mark and collect his pension and go. But he had to cut his journey a lot shorter. So um, until last week, I was proud to tell everyone that I had met, that I met, that I worked for Atlanta Police Department. But he said on June 10th, the resignation letter obtained exclusively by the Washington Examiner, he wrote in there, his view of the department changed following the arrest of six Atlanta police officers after a video surfaced of them pulling two college students out of their car during a protest. And so the incident went viral, only added to the, the distance of the vitriol growing between a uh, divide between law enforcement and the people that they are paid to police or paid to serve and police. And so Cooper said that the officers were following directives from the higher ups, but were thrown under the bus by leadership who would have ha had their backs. Who should have they should have had their backs and they didn't. So the direction of the police department or the Atlanta Police Department has taken is nothing more than sad, he wrote. And so I was a longtime believer in leadership, but I am now disappointed to find out just truly how poor it is. And so so Cooper said that he had to go because he couldn't represent a department that does not support the backbone of the very department. So it's disheartening and it's demoralizing. So Officer Thomas A. Crowder tendered his resignation. And so Crowder, born and raised in Atlanta, had always dreamed of becoming a police officer, but his thoughts have uh, since soured. So today, my last day as a city of Atlanta uh, employee, and uh, I would never have thought 
that I would be so happy to leave, he, he had wrote, this was June 17th, farewell letter. And so he left the department and he added, I cannot see a reason that an officer who has been on the department for less than 20 years would not leave. And so at this moment, you guys have no backing from your command uh, staff. It is crazy that they could ask you to stay and work, even leave the precinct knowing that they are not going to have your back and is willing to fire you as soon as a citizen complains. So this is police basically venting their frustration about all of these things. I believe this started when Joyce Floyd incident happened and the protest and all of that. And so some officers feel like um, the public has turned completely against them and there's no support. And so I don't think that's entirely true. Uh, it's just the support that they had in the beginning was not correct. And it was a lot of people that were using the police officers uh, as sort of uh, the go-to to do their dirty deeds. They'll call the police officer on black people and black people won't be doing anything wrong. And the officer will go out there unassuming, not knowing what's going on and be told the person has a gun or be told uh, some type of lie. And then they pursue this person unlawfully and the person is not even aware that the police is even going to show up on the scene and the officer may not even be aware of the nature of the phone call is, is being uh, so is that these phone calls are set up or are calls to, to basically target black people or target innocent people or protesters that really aren't doing anything and I think that has something to do with it and so there's somebody in the in the woodworks in the back there that is orchestrating a lot of this this divide among um, officers that honestly are just trying to do their job and you have some officers that might be you know shady and they do take things a little too far you know they're supposed to read people's rights they're supposed to at least find out what's going on in the situation first before apprehending anybody learn of the circumstance, you know, unless it's like one of those situations where it's extremely dangerous. But I guess there's a lot of, a lot of uh, issues here at play. It's a mixed bag of stuff because we've had officers that are doing things that they shouldn't be doing. And then we've had people that are doing things that are citizens that they probably shouldn't be do, really doing. But it turns out bad for everyone, doesn't it? There's no winners here. And so it goes on to read that Cooper and Prouder's frustrations echo many police officers the Washington Examiner has heard from who are fed up with the labeled public uh, pariahs and uh, lacking international or internal support of their superiors. And so like Atlanta, police morale across the country has dropped while retirements and resignations have hit an all-time high. So a June survey, nearly 200 departments in the Police Executive Research Forum and a nonprofit Washington-based think tanks showed 45% increase in retirement rates and 18% increase in resignations across the board. This was in 2020 and 2021 compared to the previous year. And like I said, I believe it had to do with the, the Trump uh situation where people went to the Capitol and just all hell broke loose uh, on the Capitol and with the uh, insurrection and and then you know the also the George Floyd and the protest and the descent of the citizens the people that are fed up with being um, attacked and then now you know you have a lot of people feel that they're being attacked and officers that are now feeling that they're being attacked and so uh, we are in uncharted territory right now uh, purse executive director chuck wexler said so policing is being challenged in ways it hasn't seen ever and so not only do the police departments face challenges retain retaining officers but they also have had a hard time pulling in new recruits so a lot of people are not signing up for that that job you know there's a lot of job openings but that's one of them that people are not like racing to go go into because of all of the the blowback 
from what's been happening. So this backlash against police officers saw a big uptick following the death of, of course, George Floyd, an unarmed black man who died after the white officer in Minneapolis knelt on his neck for more than nine minute, minutes. And so after Floyd's death came the shooting of Breonna Taylor in Louisville and Richard, Richard Brooks in Atlanta as well. So outgoing Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms, who has come under intense scrutiny for not being tough enough on crime, has blamed Atlanta soaring crime and 50% jump in murders on Republicans ending COVID-19 restrictions early and gun laws as well. And so the mayor and the governor office did not return multiple requests for comment on the crisis from the Washington Examiner. So silence is the status quo. Bill White, the CEO of Buckhead City Committee, told the Washington Examiner, so White is behind the move to turn Buckhead, a wealthy enclave of Atlanta, into its own city. So he said that the new city, which is still it faces steep uphill climb legally, would give police officers the room that they need to do their job without worrying about retribution. So we decided to stay in Buckhead and fight, White said. And when we will prevail, this gets on the ballot. We know it's going to sail through, so there is no question about it. So we will get crime under control, and we love police officers here, and we want them to not be afraid to do their job. So that's basically the whole article right there, and I felt that I was going to read that one because it, it ties into what I just read about the white supremacist groups that are rising up. Um, this is out of the Herald, uh, but this is out of the Washington Examiner. And uh, the other one was out of the route um, on the uh, incident with the police in California right here, finding out that there is an arrest of this white supremacist guy who actually had something in store for blacks, Hispanics, and Jews. And it wasn't going to be good at all. I mean, he was contemplating on doing some killing. And he's not the only one. I think there are others out there that are just waiting. And this guy actually had skills in making a pipe bomb. He had all the equipment. I take it he might have had maybe some military experience. He had a self styled right, uh, rifles um, and an arsenal. And so if you heard the other article, it says that they ended COVID-19 restrictions early and the gun laws. So we are in the middle of a war, a simmering, brewing war. And it's not only with what's going on here. Here you got police that are ditching departments. They're retiring like nobody's business uh, more than ever before. They're resigning. And so crime is going to skyrocket. And so that is what I've noticed uh, since, you know, things have been lingering. We've got this Delta, Delta Plus, and Lambda, and all these other viruses that are floating around, and all these other crises that are ecological crises is what I'm hearing. There is uh, weather, funny weather patterns, things that are happening that are crazy that don't make much sense. But this is something to be of concern because these things right here can affect a lot of people in their neighborhoods, in their cities, their towns directly when you have less law enforcement and you don't have anyone to call or they come when the damage is done and then you have people running around that are like, like this individual who is a supremacist, a part of a hate group, a white supremacist, and he's looking to do some major damage and he's got an arsenal stored away and he's ready to to strike at any moment and this is the thing you too also um donald trump has been he's been uh campaigning he's been trying to build his base even more so and he's also been encouraging people to not get vaccinated and to stay uh without shots and it's creating a lot of uh, divide, even more than ever before. And so I, I think that is what is, should be really in the news, is these things right here. Because people don't say anything about it, or they don't see anything happen, they just get quiet. 
and hope that nothing happens. But these people are out there and they're waiting to strike at any given moment. And like what it said that was so disturbing in this article that he wanted to go into like a sporting goods store. That could be any one of us in a store shopping, minding our own business. He wanted to go into a sporting goods store and he wanted to, he even etched lettering on the bullets to a widow from the Grim Reaper and a good start. Crazy stuff like that. And he wanted to go in to a sporting goods store, dress up as an employee and tie everybody up so he could torture them. And probably he would have done the same thing that the Dylan Wolf did, maybe leave one to tell about it and shoot everyone else and uh, torture everyone else. And so there are people like this guy out there and they're just waiting to strike. And I, I don't think they're paying close enough attention to these groups like they should. Because if you have cops that are leaving and they're frustrated, and you know, <clears throat> I personally saw an incident happen where someone told me that the police told them, if we don't see, if you don't see anybody fighting, and if you don't see anything happening, then we're not coming. And it used to be they would come and they would talk to people and try to reason with people and stop things before, try to defuse things before hand. But now these officers have, have totally thrown in the town. They said, you're on your own, basically. And that's a breeding ground for chaos. And so having said that, so this, this two articles, Atlanta police ditching the department and a lot of other police officers in your community, most likely, are starting to say that's it we've had it and then you have these people running around out there and you don't know when they're going to strike <laughs>